Hello everyone, welcome back. So in previous lecture, we discussed about first level cash, right? So actually uh, last week uh, I am very busy and uh, coming week also I am very busy because of that I am not able to upload the videos. So I am very busy in office actually. Uh, I think uh, coming second week onwards uh, I will be free. So I will upload videos continuously guys, okay? So there is a delay in, uh, in this week or next week I will, uh, th there is a delay. So after that I will upload all the videos, okay? So I am very busy actually. So whenever I am uh, having time, I will upload the videos. Okay. So now in this lecture, we are going uh, in previous lecture, we discussed about first level cash, right? So in this lecture, we, we are going to learn second level cash. Okay. So second level cash. So before explaining about second level cash, I want to explain problem statement what is the problem we are implementing second level cash and what is the purpose so before that so let's see what is the problem currently so let me go to spring application so i think previous lecture we have implemented many to many relationship right so earlier uh, so we have already have uh, car jpa repository person jpa repository and also we have uh, entities right core entity and person entity so we have many to many relationship so any relationship we can apply uh, uh, second level cash or first level cash so let me explain you problem statement so we are going to test with the uh, command line runner so what i will do so in palm.xml we have already added uh, spring dev tools right so if you have spring dev tools dependency every time uh, whenever we are modifying the java class so our server will restart every time so instead of that let me comment it out spring dev tools otherwise it will keep disturb us uh, so now what i will do We are going to I am going to show you problem statement before implementing second level cache. Why we are going to implement uh, why we are going to use second level cache? I will tell you the purpose. Okay, so now we are going to test with uh, command line runner. Sorry, it's a interface, right? So let me right implements command line runner and it has a run method so we are going to test with the command line runner so once uh, whenever we are starting spring boot application so spring will initialize application context after that it will execute run method so what are all the statements available in run method those statements will be executed right so let me tell you so we have a car JPA repository and person JPA repository. Let me fetch the person details in our database. Let me open SQL yog. So we have already car table and person table, right? So car is having a three cars, BMW, Audi and Rolls Royce and person is having Rohit Sharma and Virat Kohli. So now first i will uh, retrieve person details so to retrieve person details we need a person jpa repository right private person jpa repository so who will create this object spring boot will create the object so spring container so i have declared it as auto white so now we have a person jpa repository so let me fetch find the person specific person uh find by id so let me fetch uh, which id let me fetch rohit sharma rohit sharma is having 3l so th now dot get so we will get person object
let me organize the imports control shift to all so let me display person details system dot out dot print ln so i want to print person details person so so one time so first time i am fetching person details first person details fetch person details one fetch one time first time one time i want to fetch fetch one i want to fetch multiple times one two three sorry i have copied wrongly let me copy properly two three four so four times i want to display person details here let me give here person one and person one object let me create a person two and let me display person two object fetch two and person three and print person three third time let me print fourth time as well so here what i am trying to do i am trying to fetch uh, person details four times one two three and four so let me run in debug mode put breakpoint here and just right click on the class and debug as java application save the class here so whenever your spring application spring boot application is starting so after application context create it will execute run method this is easiest way to test uh, associations or hibernate caching okay yeah breakpoint came successfully so let me clear the console i just clear the console let's see what is happening in background when i am trying to fetch specific person function uh, let me put everywhere here also one breakpoint here also i want to fetch breakpoint okay now function effect you can see the moment fetch person details fetch one so person details are displayed person id one rohi sharma is displayed successfully there is a select statement is generated in background that means one database call is happened so details are coming from database now what will happen second time also i am trying to retrieve same user information let will let's see what will happen function f8 you can see again rohit sharma details are fetched from database two times uh, hibernate query is generated next let's me try one more time function f8 so third time also executed third time also database call let me execute fourth time function f8 see four times one one two three four times database calls are happening whenever we are trying to request same information multiple times so there is a, a multiple times sql statements are generated right so let me check uh, let me display core details as well so roy sharma is having a uh, car details right one person can associate with multiple cars right so multiple persons can associate it with multiple cars that is the meaning of many to one so here let me try to print a car details as well so person one dot get cars so car details <coughs> ka 
car details okay car details fetch one similarly i want to display four times car details fetch two person two again i want to display car details fetch three third time i want to fetch person three dot get cars similarly here also fetch four now let's see now so let me clear the console let me run now so now we don't need to run in debug mode you already uh, let me run debug mode to make you understand let me clear the console application oh, port already in use so server is already in starting mode right so let me stop the server because other server is not started so this kind of problems what you have to do see by mistake i restarted the server again because already server is started server is in running mode so i again try to start what will happen it will not run right so how we can uh, solve that issue go to your uh, task manager control alt to delete and go to details and uh, select java so type java so you can see it java letter is there right just end the task what will happen so it will uh, server will kill properly so now let me run it in now let me run in debug mode again debug java application clear the console and now you can see function f8 so now car details so it came to car details so now when it, it is trying to fetch the car details you can see when we are trying to fetch the car details so there is a one more query will be generated function f8 see it's not generated why let me check fail to command line on the spring boat why fetch a lazily lazy initialization why because in many to many relationship actually by default it will perform lazy operation so we cannot uh, there is no transaction available here so what i will do let me uh, create uh, car details here better you perform whenever it is trying to get by default it is performing a lazy operation many to many by default it will perform lazy operation right so now i want to perform eager loading so what you will do so here fetch type eager let's check now let me stop the server and let me start again function f8 now one query is generated you can see see now along with the uh, person details now car details also coming so earlier why we got exception so in many to many relationship uh, by default it will uh, perform lazy loading right so now we just i am explicitly i mentioned it as a eager loading what will happen whenever we are trying to fetch the person details along with the person details we will get car information as well because it now i have given as a eager loading so now who are all watching newly if you don't know eager loading and uh, lazy loading you can watch my previous videos to make you understand okay so now let me open the console see function f8 so now you can see there is a uh, car details are printed now car details also displayed right so now one transaction so second transaction all will happen second action fun function f8 so second transaction or uh, second time also query is generated and uh, car details also displayed and person details also displayed so what does it mean now i will skip the 
state all the statements so whenever each and every request multiple times queries are generated so what is the problem here for fetching same information multiple times in multi thread environment if you try to fetch multiple times same information so there is no need of connecting with database to fetch the information instead of fetching information from the database so similar kind of results if you want to fetch then we can put it in second level cache if you put it in second level cache what will happen so subse subsequent of same request whenever you are trying to invoke that time it every time it will not request will not go to the database or so results will come from second level cache so now that is the problem so every time whenever subsequent of request so every time uh, new query is generated in uh, console right so hibernate is generating the console so sorry hibernate is generating the sql statement to fetch the details from database that is the performance issues the common data let's assume while fetching the person information i don't want to fetch the car details so sorry i don't want to uh, fetch the car details from the database every time I, I want to fetch only one time and then remaining time i want to fetch from second level cache so now i understood the you understood the problem right so generally in second level cache why we are using typically is used to store common data which is not changed in database the data which is not changed in database that kind of data we will keep it in second level cache so whenever you are trying to fetch those details it will always results will come from second level cache there is no database call so common data nothing but uh, if you use user information so in user information name is common right so that that name you no need to fetch from the database every time you can put it in second level cache and then you can uh, improve the performance issues so second level cache is used to store common data which is not changed in database so to uh, perform second level cache in our spring boot application we note we know we need to eclipse explicitly enable the second level cache if you want to enable first level cache you no need to enable anything by default first level cache is enabled in spring or spring boot application but if you want to implement second level cache you have to eclipse explicitly uh, write the code to enable second level cache so to implement second level cache we have to follow four steps so uh, here i have clearly mentioned if you want to implement second level cache we have to implement these four steps what is the first step so first step is we need to add following dependencies in palm.xml so with hibernate j cache and eh cache so let me add these two dependencies in palm.xml this is the first steps to implement second level cache so let me add dependency from where you can copy the dependencies let me copy hibernate j cache and go to the browser and type second hibernate j cache maven dependency so you can see first link very first link you can click maven repository so you, you will go with always you will go with the latest version since i am using uh, let me open palm.xml since i am using 3.1 version so spring boot 3.1 i am using currently you can see spring boot 3.1.5 so whenever you are using spring 3.3.0 onwards you can go with always latest version 6.4 so here uh, let me go with the uh, latest version 6.4 so let me copy the dependency copy the dependency control c and you have to add it into palm.xml anywhere you can add as a dependency so let me add the dependency control v organize the code control shift f so there is a type here so you should not uh, mention type if you put this type so this dependency will be ignored by default so what you have to do you have to remove this uh, palm no, no need actually 
so now you just save this uh, save the file in background automatically the jar will be downloaded into your local maven repository so now what is another one we need to add eh cache so this is another dependency let me go to maven central same way same way how we can do maven central maven dependency eh cache maven dependency so argo dot eh cache you can use this one argo dot eh cache so here also we'll go with the latest version 3.10.8 so let me copy the maven dependency eh cache copied and go to your uh, palm.xml and paste it here control a control shift f organize the code control a control shift f to arrange the proper code so you can see so now eh cache arg dot eh cache dependency two dependencies are added so this version is showing warning because we no need to add the version that's the reason it is showing if you, if you keep also no problem or you can remove since it is showing warning i will remove it so now we have added two dependencies so first step is done successfully so the moment you add the dependencies make sure whenever you are modifying the palm.xml you should always update the maven project right click the right click on the project go to maven and update project otherwise those libraries will not load into your uh, project properly project library okay so now just update right click on maven update what will happen these two libraries will be added into your maven repository here okay so and your project uh, library as well okay lib folder so now first step is successfully done so now second step so we have to need to enable second level cache in application so what we have to do second step we have to enable second level cache to enable second level cache this is the property we need to add spring.jpa.properties.hibernate.cache.use second level cache is equal to true so if you add this property then only second level cache will be enabled to your application let me copy this property and go to uh, where we can add there is application.properties right Spring Boot application is application dot properties. If you are using Gradle build, then you can uh, add it into the your Gradle, right? So here, since I'm using my so here pro proper application dot properties here. Let me add. So now, once you add this one, so any spell mistake if you have done, your second level cache will not be enabled, guys. Make sure your spelling should be proper. So now, sec use second level cache equal true. Let me save the application now second step also done now what you have to do implement uh, third step so what is the third step we have to use the factory class we have to factory class in the sense there is a different kinds of uh, cache frameworks are available available we have to tell to spring boot to use a specific uh, uh, cache framework caching framework we have to tell nothing but which caching framework we have to use we have to tell to hibernate or spring boot so which caching framework we have to use application has to use so here i am using currently j cache there is a j cache so internal j cache region factory so there is a eh cache also available there is a uh, different kinds of uh, caching frameworks as available and uh, we can use any one of the caching frameworks currently i am using j caching framework j cache region factory so whenever you are trying to add, implement second level cache you have to add specific you have to tell to spring boot like use uh, uh, second level cache and which uh, second level cache and which which caching framework our application should use because of that we have to add factory class so let me add this property into our application dot property so step two also done so now let me add uh, step one step two so both are added successfully so let me what is the step uh, sorry step three also done so what is the step four step four will be now what kind of data which data we need to cache in second level cache which data we have to store it in second level cache hibernate doesn't know hibernate or spring doesn't know spring boot doesn't know 
uh, which data I need to store it in uh, second level cache. We have to explicitly tell to Hibernate Spring Boot to store uh, the entity which is going to cache. So here I will clearly mention which data we need to store it in second level cache. We have to tell to Hibernate. So whether all the entities we have to cache or cache only what we would like to cache. So for that purpose, we need to add this dependency fourth fourth property we need to add shared cache enable selective i will explain you what is this property so let me add this property as well we have to tell to hibernate which level of sorry what are all the entities we need to store it in second level cache to tell that we need to add this property in application dot properties so now all four are done successfully first step is we have added a uh, palm.xml dependencies we have enabled second level cache we have used the factory class so jcache uh, caching framework we are using currently so now step four we are telling we are adding this property to, we are telling to hibernate or jpa to uh, to store specific entity in second level cache so otherwise hibernate uh, doesn't know which entity I need, uh, I need to store it in uh, second level cache that is the reason we have to add this property so all are done so now uh, let me explain you what is this shared cache so shared cache nothing but let me go to here so after that once we add the dependencies let I think we have already updated my own project right like, let me update one more time so it's updated properly so library is also updated so now let me open this class jcache region factory i want to make you understand what is jcache factory so what i will do so it is showing unknown right so you can see control shift o it is imported properly go to this class c sorry not jcache if you if you go it here there is a different kinds of uh, shared mode so jcache region factory so not this one so i don't want to debug this one if you want to debug that was shared memory shared memory in the sense just type here shared cache mode there is a shared cache mode is available so here you just type so i just want to show this as well shared cache mode nothing but you can see it has uh, few properties all nothing but the property which i have defined in application dot properties shared cache mode shared cache mode in the sense we have to tell to hibernate uh, which are all the entities we are going to store it in second level cache so if you give uh, shared cache is equal to enable selective what will happen enable selective nothing but caching is enabled for all the entities where you have declared cacheable true the entities which are declared as a at the rate cacheable annotation so uh, those entities will be stored in second level cache that is the meaning of this one this is actually in real time environment frequently used this one this is the property frequently used to store second level cache why because we no need to store all the entities in second level cache so we need to cache which are all common data which is not changed from the database so those kind of data only we have to store it in second level cache that is the purpose we have to explicitly specify your entity uh, along with at the rate cacheable annotation so all nothing but so all the entities will be stored in second level cache that is the meaning of this property if you give option none then none of the uh, entities will not store in second level cache so enable selective only specified uh, what are all the entities which are specified with the cacheable annotation those entities will be stored in second level cache so uh, disable selective nothing but so uh, which are all the entities if you declared cacheable false then those entities will be disabled to store in second level cache this you can ignore it we will not use this one so now here uh, let me now i want to use uh, 
uh, I have to I have to tell to Spring Boot or Hibernate to use uh, to use specific entity to store specific entity as a in second level cache. So here in this example, let's assume core details will not change in database. Let's assume core details will not change in database. So that is the reason I want to store core details in second level cache. So for that purpose, we have to declare. Uh, if you want to enable any entity to store in second level cache, we have to declare at the rate cache cacheable annotation. So just go to the core entity, any entity guys, which are all the entity you want to uh, store it in second level cache, that entity you have to declare it as a at the rate cacheable jakarta dot persistent so here you need know, you have to declare at the rate cacheable along with your entity so the moment you declare at the rate cacheable by default it will be true if you go to inside that just press control and go to inside by default value will be true true by default true in the sense so when this core details will be stored into second level cache so whenever first time you request for core details that time core details will be stored into second level cache that is the meaning of at the rate cacheable annotation if you give false then uh, this will not be stored into the second level cache okay so now what i will do i have declared it as a core entity as at the rate cacheable annotation so core details will be stored into second level cache now let's test this now now how we can test so let me to avoid confusion let me remove all those things and save so now you can see here let me fetch the person details first and then after that i want to fetch core details also so if you want to fetch the core details we need a core jpa repository so let me create core jpa repository as well to fetch the core details why because we have to test whether every time database call is happening or not core jpa repository and then let's create uh, define annotation who will create this object spring container will create so now let me fetch the core information as well core is equal core jp repository dot find by id i want to fetch car one get that's it so now let me organize the import so now i I am going to fetch core details. Let me print the core details explicitly here. So core details fetch one person details fetch one. So here core details car just print the car details. So car one. Okay, let me. Try to fetch the same car again and again. I want to fetch same car again and again. So car one, car two. Second time we have to display fetch two. And again car three. Third time also I am going to fetch same car. Let me fetch fourth time as well. Four. So here, what we are doing now? One time we are fetching person information. So another time we are fetching car details. Fetch one time and sec fetch two. Second time fetch three. Three times and fetch four. Four times. Same car details we are trying to fetch multiple times. Let's see what will happen in this case so now let me run in debug mode so let me stop the server previous server so now this is not needed why this is only to show you purpose i just uh, added that so now let me right click and debug as 
java application let me put breakpoint here so now let me clear the console so let me execute function f8 so what will happen query is generated and person details displayed and now let me fetch the car details so car details are here already fetched right so now let me fetch the car details function f8 if you observe see car details are fetched but there is no query generated so whenever you are trying to fetch the car details there is no query generated so let me fetch again function f8 function f8 function f8 so there is no query is generated so this car details are coming from second level cache only one time one time sql statement is generated so let me show you another way so how let me stop the server so instead of car details here just remove i want to comment this person details so no need to print person details as well so let me start the server so if i don't cache what will happen so let's see i don't want to cache for the time being car details i don't want to cache so what will happen now so let me debug as java application each request will be one new request right one new transaction let me clear the console so breakpoint came and clear the console what i have done guys you have to observe now so car i have commented out cacheable so what will happen here one time i am fetching same car second time i am fetching uh, and third time also i am fetching four times i am trying to fetch same core details so now let's execute function f8 so very first time query will be generated select column names from the car so bmw is printed successfully very first time this is one request one request will be one new transaction so each database call will be one new transaction so first time core uh, details are coming from database why because there is a sql statement is generated because of that these core details are coming from database let's try now second time what will happen function f8 see again query is generated because since it is a second transaction second transaction so each database request will be one new transaction guys so first time when it when i am trying to fetch sql statement is generated second time when i am trying to fetch so second time also sql uh, statement is generated to fetch the core details third time what will happen third time function f8 see third time also sql statement generated so let me try fourth time also function f8 see fourth time also sql statement is generated whenever subsequent request to the database calls so every time every time subsequent request whenever you are trying to fetch same information again and again there is a new database uh, sorry new select statement is created in uh, console so hibernate is trying to fetch every time same information we are trying to fetch it here so hibernate is every time it is going connecting to the database and it is fetching the results so this is this will have performance issue so fetch getting same information again and again parallelly subs, uh, subsequent of request that time every time fetching the results from database is performance issue so we no need to connect with the database every time while fetching same information now what i will do i don't want to connect to the database every time to fetch same information so i want to cache the core details i don't want to fetch from database every time so now what will happen so now i just uh, enabled again cacheable clear the console let me stop the server and now 
let me start the server again run in debug mode i hope you guys are understood clearly now second level cache very very easy guys i just clearly mentioned step by step see now first time car so console i just clear the console very first time what will happen function f8 see query is generated this is agreed why because this is first transaction request first time i am trying to fetch car details one from the database so very first time it will uh, fetch from the database so second time what will happen let's see function f8 see there is no sql statement generated so these details are coming from second level cache let me check third time function f8 function f4 see remaining all three times details are coming from second level cache not from database so now you people may have doubt sir how do i know whether the details are coming from a second level cache or first level cache it might be it might be coming from first level cache right because in previous lecture we try we, i told you right whenever uh, first time only it is going to create a query and second time it will face from first level cache you can assume now sir how, how do i confirm whether these details are coming from second level cache or first level cache so let me prove that these details are coming from second level cache so to prove that what we have to do go to your application dot properties and enable now we will debug in depth guys so i want to prove you these details are coming from second level cache to prove that let me debug in depth now so now what we can do we can add two properties we can enable debug log, debug logs right so specific i want to debug hibernate uh, what hibernate is doing in background whether really it is uh, core details are storing in second level cache or not so how we can do that let me enable let me enable logging sorry logging debug logs for hibernate how we can do that there is a logging dot so logging dot level dot arg dot hibernate dot type so i want to trace that so what we will do background what is happening T R S E trace so here logging dot level dot uh, arg dot hibernate dot type is equal trace the moment you add this what will happen we can debug background is really core details are coming from second level cache or not so next we want to display statistics also so i want to display the statistics of uh, hibernate how we can display statistics of hibernate by enabling spring dot jpa dot properties dot hibernate dot so generate generate underscore statistics that's it is equal to true what will happen so the moment you enable these two we can check what is happening in background whether hibernate is really is going to fetch the core details from second level cache or not so not only second level cache but if you want to debug hibernate in depth so you can enable these properties any any database operation whatever you want to debug you can enable these three properties these two properties to debug in depth so now let me clear the console let me stop the server i will start from scratch so let me run server in debug mode now let's see whether really those details are coming from second level cache or not debug as java application very very easy guys you just need to understand the concept we have to perform four steps to enable second level cache so if you see if you check the console now there is a lot more class hibernate statistics are displaying here you can see as of now there is a l2 you can see here l2 jdbc zero jdbc statements are generated and there is a another l2c puts l2c hits l2c misses i will explain you later what are those these 
in those three properties you can see l2c nothing but second level cash level 2 cash l2c nothing but level 2 cash we are debugging in depth in background what is happening whether really core details are storing in level 2 cash or not so now as of now there is no database calls nothing is stored in uh, second level cache right no database calls and zero database calls you can see zero database state sql statements are generated and there is zero records are stored in second level class second level cache as of now so let me clear the console and let me execute first statement function f8 if you observe the console you can see one jdbc statement is generated you can see what is that one select core details very first time it is connected uh, connected with the database and fetching core details from the database so sql statement is generated that is the meaning of that one statement is generated nothing but one database request one database call is happened and also if you observe see uh, metrics you can see level 2 cache puts level 2 cache puts nothing but so core details are stored in second level cache you can confirm that now so sec earlier when i start the server zero jdbc statements and zero second level cache zero records are in second level cache now one jdbc request so one statement is generated and core it that one core details are stored in second level cache l2c nothing but second level cache puts nothing but so hibernate is the moment we declared uh, core details as at the rate cacheable annotation so that is the reason core details are whenever you are requesting core details first time so those details are uh, kind of fetched from database very first time and those details are stored in second level cache and what is the misses nothing but whenever you are enabling second level cache so hibernate will check whether these details are available in second level cache or not if it is not available then one misses that is that is the meaning of this one level two cache is missing nothing but whatever details you are requesting very first time those details are not available in second level cache that is the meaning of that one record is missing in second level cache so now uh, and that record that missing record will be stored in puts l2c puts nothing but that record is stored in level 2 cache nothing but second level cache and core details are displayed successfully now we'll see what will happen second request so let me execute second request function f8 see if i if i execute function f8 see there is no database calls zero database calls you can see there is no database call happening and sql statement also not generated and you can see there is a one l2c hits nothing but one detail core details are coming from second level cache not from the database second time query is not generated now you can confirm that our details are stored in second level cache and those details are coming from second level cache that is the meaning of one l2 c it's so zero missing zero missing nothing but zero misses nothing but so the the core details one which we are requested those details are, are available in second level cache so that is the reason zero misses and one hits nothing but those details are available uh, require those details are coming from second level cache and zero puts zero puts nothing but the same details which, which we are requesting those are those details are not stored in second level cache why because those are all already available in as part of first request those details are stored in you can see here one put one l2c put first time very first time those details are already stored in second level cache and second time when you are trying to fetch that time it is not stored here and it is a uh, fetching exist from the existing second level cache so now you can confirm that 
we are able to fetch the we are able to store the second store the car details in second level cache let me try third time also function effect so third time also we i have requested so third time will happen again what you to see so again details are coming from second level cache again fourth time so as many number of time as many number of subsequent request if you uh, fetch the same information again and again those details will come from second level cache it will always fetch from second level cache now we can confirm that our details are coming from second level cache let me prove uh, let me try to fetch uh, new details new core details how do uh, let me fetch new core details whether those details will be stored in second level cache or not let's see so that i will check uh, will you test from uh, let's test from uh, web service also some people are asking me sir every time you are testing from command line runner so please test from web service also so let me test this uh, second level cache functionality from invoking uh, web service as well so what i will do i will stop the server and i will clear the console let me check i already created the controller you can see in our project we have a person core rest controller i have created so there is a api is available find person api and find car api so let's see what will happen if we invoke the apis from the browser or rest client anywhere so let me stop the server now debug mode not needed okay anyway i just executed So let me stop the server. So guys, let me copy. Sorry, let me uh, comment it out. Otherwise, when uh, once this is executed, this will be cached in uh, stored in a second level cache, right? I don't want to do that. I want to test this from REST API. Let me test. Most of the people are asking. So now let me run the server. Now we are going to test the second level cache by using REST calls. I have created the controller already to save some time. So here you can see find the person API is there. Here nothing. Here I am just finding the person details. And here I am just finding the core details. So find the core API and person core API. So now our server is started successfully. I just cleared the console. So now go to your browser and try to invoke localhost colon 8080 slash uh, find person or find car anything find car let me find car find car api slash what i will do so find the car which car details we can fetch let me check in database in database already i have three cars bmw one two three So find the car one. So let me fetch. Oops. So multiple records came. Why? Because so this uh, car entity is having relationship with uh, person as well, right? Many to many relationship. So car is associated with the person. That's the reason whenever I'm trying to fetch the car details from the database. So there is a when type conversion is happening that time uh, infinity loop is going on. So it went to the person again inside the person again there is a car. So that is the reason when you are invoking with restful APIs. So that time uh, this many to many relationship what will happen whenever your results are came back. So that time whenever, whenever it is trying to return the results again one more uh it is again trying to fetch the person information from car car to person and person to car that is the reason what i will do i will ignore as of now to fetch the person details from the car information so that is that is the that is the results here you can see bmw bmw roy sharma roy sharma roy sharma recursion happened so while invoking rest apis what do you do you just ignore this property to avoid uh, recursion if you don't understand the concept please watch previous lectures so this one here 
uh, ignore uh, or json ignore some property will be there json ignore just ignore now so now what will happen let me stop the server and restart again to understand many to many relationship you can watch my previous videos guys who are all watching newly okay so let me once the server is started successfully there is no database calls and, and uh, nothing no re, no records are stored in level 2 cache so let me clear the console so now i will uh, invoke the car details again so fetch the car detail see car details one bmw if you check in database there is a car details bmw one so bmw one is successfully fetched very first time so very first time what will happen so you can see very first time what is happening so there is a sql statement is generated and these core details are stored in level 2 cache one database call and it is stored in level 2 class and uh, zero hits because these details are not coming from second level cache and this one so very first time so these core details are not stored in uh, second level cache that is the reason one is misses so now uh details are stored in first level uh, sorry second level cache right you can see core details are stored in second level cache so let me clear the console now and let me hit one more time what will happen we'll see let me send the request refresh the browser again same request i sent again see if you sent again so there is zero database calls and those details are not put in uh, second level cache again so these details are coming from second level cache and zero misses since already details are available in second level cache those details are coming from second level cache you can see there is no sql statement generated let me clear the console again let me refresh again refresh. let me send the request multiple times i sent now so he has many number of times same time if you request same request again and again there is no database call so details are coming from level 2 cache so core details are coming from level 2 cache so let me try now let me clear the console now what will happen i want to fetch another car so which car i want to fetch rd car rd car is having two so now uh, this two rd car two details are not stored in database right so very first time i am requesting now very first time i am requesting rd car let me send the request to fetch the rd car details so now you can see so this is we are very first time we are trying to fetch rd car 2 that is the reason there is a database call and these details are stored in level 2 level 2 cache see one record is stored in level 2 cache one l2c puts nothing but rd car also stored in second level cache so one database call is happened one uh, rd car is missing in second level cache so now it is stored in second level cache now let me clear the console uh, let me fetch the rd car now again let me refresh the send the same request if you check so there is no database call because rd car is already stored in uh, second level cache since it is stored in second level cache details are coming from second level cache zero database request zero database sql statements are generated there is no sql statement is generated one jdbc connection one jdbc a call is happened and uh, sorry not jdbc connection guys this is coming from l2 cache because there is no sql statement is generated sql statement is gen not generated zero sql statements are generated and level 2 cache from level 2 cache rd core details are displayed so now let me fetch one more time what will happen same rd car again i refresh again i sent one more request go to the database console to the console so every time whenever you are sending same request those details are coming from level 2 cache so let me try now third car 
third car nothing but rolls royce so let me try rolls royce so rolls royce is not available earlier so now if you check the console there is no sql statement so earlier we have stored car 1 and car 2 though both are stored in level 2 cache so now rd car now rolls royce is not stored in level 2 cache let me fetch very first time let me send one more request yeah i just sent rd uh, so, sorry since uh, since it is 2 again it is coming from second level cache let me try third car rolls royce let me put it here 3 and click enter so now since it is new request to fetch the uh, rolls royce so that is the reason there is a database call one database call is happened and those uh, rolls royce will be stored into second level cache and then uh, uh, and, and zero hits nothing but details are coming from database not from second level cache misses nothing but so rolls royce is missing in second level cache what will happen whenever you are trying to request so hibernate will check whether these details are available since we are enabled second level cache hibernate will check whether these details are available in cache or not so it is checked in cache level 2 cache so since it is not available that is the reason one misses so what will happen this detail uh, 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 de there is one database call and fetch the details from the database and stored into level 2 cache so now what will happen next if i request same details rolls rise again click enter so one more request will go to the server and zero database statements and uh, rolls rise also coming from second level cache so now you can confirm that we are able to successfully test second level cache by using command line runner as well as rest apis very 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 easy guys you guys have to understand the concept so now as many number of time whenever you are requesting so let me clear the console so now let me try to fetch uh, all the cars uh, sequential order so now i have just cleared the console so what will happen now i, I want to fetch again uh, uh, bmw car so bmw i just fetched it since bmw is stored in here uh, second level cache there is no sql statement generated and you can see details are coming from one l2c uh, hits actually so because the details are coming from second level cache right so because one l2c hits you can see one l2c hits so now let me try to fetch uh, uh, rd car as well so rd car also coming from <coughs> second level cache let me try rolls rise again so like this you can understand guys so all are coming from second level cache so based on your requirement whichever entity you want to store it in second level cache that entity you can declare it as a at the rate cacheable annotation basically uh, any common data which never stored in data never changed in database that kind of data only we will put it in second level cache you have to understand when to use second level cache so which are all the common data related to your application whenever you are invo invoking multi-thread environment same data if you want to invoke multiple times so that time you can use second level cache those details you can store into second level cache and your system performance will be very good so instead of multiple database calls only one time on db call will be there and remaining subsequent of request details will come from second level cache overall watching newly you can subscribe my channel and uh, you can watch all the videos by invoking this channel youtube.com slash at the rate rasul iphan shake slash playlist if you go to this channel or you can type in uh, 
YouTube directly Java cafeteria if you type Java cafeteria you can directly get this uh, channel so you can subscribe and watch all the uh, you can go to the playlist there is a multiple videos are available you can learn Spring Boot Angular JS Spring Data JDBC and uh, Spring JPA Spring Data JPA and microservices and uh, uh, Mojito framework and Spring security and uh, JWT lot of uh, stuff you can learn it here guys if you like and please subscribe and share thank you so much i will uh, as soon as i find the time i will upload a new concept into this same channel guys thank you so much